presentation. It was also included in your in your package, and the uh, floor is theirs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor and Councillors. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to come before you this afternoon. Um, let us start by thanking the town of Olds for its continued support of the Olds Grizzlies. Since taking over the team this summer, the Friends of the Grizzlies have made some great strides, but know there is much left to do to getting this franchise back to sustainability. Your continued support will be paramount to that success. The Friends of the Grizzlies is a group of local community partners and Olds Grizzly alumni who came together with a unified vision to bring the Olds Grizzlies, excuse me, AJHL franchise back to the roots and foundation on which its rich history of success was built. They share a desire to give back to the community who they feel responsible for making them the individuals they are today. Whether they currently live in Olds or are active community and business leaders or they simply pass through on a fantastic journey centered around their time as part of the Grizzlies. They all feel a debt of gratitude to this wonderful community. The Friends of the Grizzlies have come together and have a vision of sustainability and prosperity for both the team and the town itself. They understand the need to give back and support your uh, youth athletics, local business, and have a plan for sustainability and longevity in this growing community. There are a few key factors that the Friends of the Grizzlies identified as keys to putting this franchise back into a winning tradition both on and off the ice. The first and biggest is community involvement. Giving back and being involved in the community that has been such a solid long-term, has been full of such long, solid long-term supporters. The second key is an experienced team to run the hockey and business side of the team. To achieve that goal, Friends of the Grizzlies has partnered with Skills Skating and Shooting Center. A skills Skating and Shooting Centre has been the measure of excellence for hockey development in Calgary region for over nine years. They offer both on and off ice specialized hockey development programs for players of all ages and abilities. Skills prides itself on their sense of community involvement which is further evidenced by their community outreach initiatives and the countless hours donated to minor hockey through coaching, coach mentorship and community programs. This is further evidenced by the planned Grizzlies give back being offered this year. The Friends of the Grizzlies and Skills have a vision and platform to give back to South Central Alberta, calling the hub of, calling the hub of Olds home. We look to bring, uh, excuse me, sorry, we will work to bring that same excellence and development to the growing communities of South Central Alberta, all under the well thought out plan and model to bring sustainability and prosperity to Olds Grizzlies of the Junior Hockey League and the town of Olds. The plan will see Skills establish a physical training facility as well as a development of spring summer development programs with a long-term goal of being the potential establishment of a hockey academy serving South Central Alberta centered out of Olds. We look forward to the years we look forward to years of success and bring the Olds Grizzlies back to the forefront of the AJHL all while benefiting the citizens of Olds, the town of Olds. Below are a list of a few things that are essential to our success over the next three years. So do you want me to go through all that list? I know everybody has notes. Do you want me to just kind of highlight them or what's... I believe if you wanted to highlight them because we do have those notes. Yeah, okay. So obviously a key one is working with Olds minor hockey is, is a critical piece to that. Um, and then there's a, a skills give... Um, Grizzly Give Back program um, that I can let Jeff elaborate when we get to the question and answer period. Um, and then number three, working with skills to establish additional affordable development programs for area residents. Working with institutions such as Olds College to support their programs as well as potentially their facilities. Uh, the fifth one, work to provide employment opportunities for Grizzlies players. Uh, number six, to be exceptional corporate citizens and community partners. Uh, this is evidenced by the immediate efforts shown to repair previous damage relationships and develop new partnerships and mutually beneficial relationships on a move forward basis. So that has been obviously a critical piece to us. 
we appreciate um, you know it's been a long-term team here in Olds. Um, the last number of years has been with a number of challenges on on many fronts. So one of our keys is to kind of reestablish those relationships and help grow those relationships. Uh, support local businesses through buying locally. So again, we have a mandate. Anything that we can do through the town here, we do previously a lot of equipment, hockey sticks, jerseys, et cetera, bought out of market, then brought into the town. Uh, now we have a mandate from the team that we try and do everything we can here first. If we can't source it here, then we'll go out to another uh, location to get that. Create a fun family experience for all home games. Um, so that's, again, a key piece to, to growing our business, if you will, is to make that an enjoyable experience. We've got a ways to go about that. The three of us actually met prior to this meeting talking a little bit about that. So it's, again, a, a work in progress, but it is heading in the right direction. Uh, build a strong presence in the community through the team, players, management, and ownership. Become more visible and engaged. And then work with local sport bodies to support each other and build a stronger, stronger sense of community partnership. So there's three key things that I've got listed here um, as the, the ask. Um, and so as you can appreciate, as one of the smaller <coughs> AJHL markets, naming rights on the arena is the single largest sponsorship opportunity for us. The examples we are all most familiar with would be the Scotiabank Saddle Dome in Calgary and Rogers Place in Edmonton. Like all these, our, uh, these are all multi-use facilities as the anchor tenant, the sponsorship money traditionally goes directly to the teams. We would like to propose a model that would benefit all large users of the facility. An example would be if a sponsor was to sponsor the arena for say $30,000 per season, uh, 10,000 of those dollars would go back to the other facility users and then 20% or 20,000 of that would go to the Grizzlies. So obviously the percentages are something that we're totally open to, to working with, with the town and council to figure out what those numbers look like. Um, you know, we, we would start with those sponsors on a three year sponsorship. We'd look for some that are longer, um, obviously very, very different markets. But if you look at the, the Calgary market and the Edmonton market, those are 10, one of them's a seven year agreement, one's a 10 year agreement but we would also look for a lengthier tenure um, of that sponsorship. The second one is TV screens in the concourse. These screens are a great way to help local businesses get their message out to the community and allows the users to generate extra revenue. We've invested in a program called Open Highway that will allow us to maximize the use of these screens. We would suggest a similar split as outlined uh, with the naming rights. And the third one is in order to accommodate our vision, we're asking to have an increased access for ice in the spring, essentially to the end of May with an eye on, with an eye on potential summer ice. All of these initiatives will benefit the town and bring employment opportunities and increased business for current and existing local businesses. Thank you again for the opportunity and we very much look forward to working with you and answering any questions that you might have. <laughs> okay. Just in reference to some of your answer, I, I did make a, a few notes here myself. You bet. Uh, in reference to your ask, of, in reference to naming rights. Yes. Um, were you aware that the town of Walls has given the Walls Grizzlies all of the advertising within? the main ice surface. And last I estimated, it was in excess of $187,000 a year. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes, we're aware of that. I yes. Think that's major. It is. Major sponsorship. It is. Correct. But but we think that the naming rights is a great opportunity for the team, you know, because one of the challenges that we have is that being in a smaller market, the access to revenue is somewhat limited. Right, so we have to find other ways to fund the team because one of the challenges historically is the team has not generated enough revenue to become sustainable on its own. So we have to look for other revenue opportunities to make the team <coughs> self-sustainable. And so you're absolutely correct. You know, that $187,000 through sponsorship goes to the team. Um, so that's why we're looking for some type of split on the naming rights to allow the team to have access to more money, but then also some of that money gets split back and goes whether it comes to the town directly or goes to other users of the facility. Okay, Councillor Bearshell and then Councillor Lyon. I'm going to ask you whether or not, so 
sort of, sort of the elephant in the room anyway. So what's your guys, what's your folks plan to pay back the outstanding debt from before, before we can look forward? I realize, I mean, some of these are great ideas and I can understand and appreciate your challenges, but in the end there's still a bill in, in excess probably of $120,000 that needs to be repaid or the taxpayers are expecting to be repaid and uh, <coughs> there's nothing that addresses that going forward. Um, so I'll let Darcy comment on that because he is the president of the Friends of the Grizzlies. Um, but what I can say is I know there was a payment that's either being made or was made, and I don't know that it's not relative to the amount outstanding. It's not a significant amount. I think it's, it was around ten thousand um, dollars. You know, our, our commitment was to stay current with um, the new group, which we have done. Um, and then we are in the process of generating additional money from other sources um, to help pay off that debt. So I'll let Darcy kind of comment on that. Deputy, uh, thank you for getting into the details of the business plan. That probably needs to go on camera. It's just general questions on their um, past uh, responsibilities. It's different. Yes. So I will be going to. I, I, I do appreciate that, uh, Mayor Majiska, but I believe that Councillor Ryan does have a gentle question. And if you wanted to go in camera and have the representatives of the Grizzlies be present while we have discussion in camera, then I'll accept your motion. That's okay. So, to Councillor Ryan. Thank you, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, my question is. What is the operating budget for the business? This doesn't say here, and with the sponsorship of $187,000 that you're receiving and there's other things, I just want to find out how much money we're looking at. Yeah, our operating budget for this year is going to come in around that $700,000 mark. Thank you. So, we have a motion from Mayor Majiska to go on camera. All in favor of that motion? Any opposed? So we will be going in camera, and um, we will be inviting the, the representatives of the Grizzlies to stay. Is that your wish? Yes. Uh, as part of that in camera. So I'm sorry, uh, to the gallery, we will be asking you to leave. The TV screens in the concourse. Um, my understanding, uh, this is probably through the chair to Mr. Wagstaff, is that all those TVs are for um, like announcing what uh, you know dressing rooms and so on and so forth so what about this open highway what does that mean so what we've uh, indicated to this point is we we did have a program in place that we were uh, implementing for this season um, but we were open to looking at alternate uh, programs in the future that would incorporate what they were uh, looking at doing because the two can blend together. Our scheduling of you know, some sort could be on a TV in there that would complement with, uh, with the type of system that, that the Grizzlies are looking at. It, it would complement the advertising with scheduling. And I believe Councillor Ryan has a question. Yes, thank you very much. I uh, was wondering about the cost for summer ice. What would it cost to extend that into uh, late May or in, potentially into the summer for the skills program? And uh, whether or not, uh, obviously, you're going to be charging a certain amount of money for this, so uh, we could bring, we could bring the uh, costs uh, involved in the operating of that ice. So we've done that analysis on, on the costing. Uh, and I can get bring back those specific specific numbers, but the uh, uh, the cost difference of continuing to operate uh, the arena through from if we're talking utilities and the cost of operating the building um, do not significantly rise, uh, primarily because we looked at the utilities January Feb November through uh, February's utilities. We also not only do we have to cool the ice, we have to heat the building. So we actually found that. Uh, it's only about $2,500 more in a month, which could easily be recouped by, by bookings, both of this group and others. Uh, the biggest challenge we have is actually the use of the facility and uh, um, you know, other user groups that use it for, without ICE um, and, the, and the booking um, 
challenge that that would present itself to us. Councilor Overwater. Thank you, Councilor Harper. Um, question regarding, uh, do you see a significant <coughs> increase in the spectators that you, now that you know a different group is operating, is there more town support? Yeah, so it's coming. You know, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Like, there was a lot of damage done to the, the Grizzlies brand, if you will. So it's going to take some time. But, yes, we're certainly starting to see more people coming out to the game. And one of the keys to that is obviously getting a team on the ice that's going to win. Um, winning solves a lot of things at a lot of levels. And that's also going to take time. You know, we're not going to sit here and tell you that we're going to go win the, the championship this year, or quite frankly, probably next year. Um, you know, it's kind of a three to five year plan and that's no different than getting people back to attend the games. And part of that is having kind of an entertainment value to those games, right? Even at the higher levels of hockey, 10 years ago, you just go buy your beer or hot dog and go watch the hockey game. And now there's almost more entertainment going on than the hockey game itself. And that's just the way our society has become. So we're looking to kind of add to the entertainment value of each of the games. So it, it is building, but we've got a long way to go. Supplement question. He did that on purpose, I think, to throw you off. So, my my uh, fellow counselor told me that you guys were planning on using the existing screens in there, but as I read this, it, it's not the way it reads. So, when you want to do advertising, you want to you want to put in more screens that advertise that just do a strictly rollover and they, the businesses pay X amount of dollars or whatever. So you'd be adding more screens into the concourse, not the ones that we currently have. Is that correct? Likely a little bit of both. So we're more than willing to add additional screens um, to a level that you know is comfortable to, to everyone here. Um, but we could also access the ones that are currently there. You know, there's some, um, as one of you mentioned, that's there to kind of say, okay, this team's in dressing room one, this team's in dressing room two. You know, those would likely stay as is. And then there's another one that has, you know, kind of some programming that runs throughout the day. And based on that open highway program, um, you know, we can set it so that, you know, we kind of choose what runs when. So we could set specific times where specific things are going to run. But we would want to add additional screens, you know, over, for example, over the concession area. We'd want to add some screens there, and there's probably a couple other strategic areas where we'd put in additional screens. So now we're we, we, before we go, do you have another question, Councillor Pearson? No, I don't. Okay, I then don't move on to Councillor Roper. <laughs> I see this. We're being ganged up on by the yeah. females again. I guess <laughs> we're sitting back in the quiet. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harper. I have my train of thought back. Um, okay, so the Friends of the Grizzly, you must sort of have a, a long-range plan as to how long you feel you can go um, before you say, okay, this is just it's not, not working. Yeah. or, you know, we're going to be here for 10 years, do or die. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll let Darcy comment on that, excuse me, comment on that as he is the president of the Friends of the Grizzlies. But what I can say, you know, one of the key things that we've identified, like I said at the very beginning, you know, we are one of the smallest centers of an AJHL team. So that's why we're looking for additional opportunities to generate revenue. And one of the things is going to make this work is kind of more of a, a central Alberta hockey team and not just old. So to try and pull not only sponsors, but also people to attend the games. You know, there's lots of, as you guys well know, lots and lots of small surrounding towns that you know, at varying times have supported the team, but it's up to us as an organization now to reach out to those towns and bring both dollars and fans into the town. Thank you. No, that's okay. Um, so yeah, like Mike was saying, uh, there is a problem with hockey in uh, pretty much Alberta. Is like uh, the all the Olds is a hub uh, town for minor hockey. So it has taken uh, all the hockey away from your surrounding communities. So they don't have uh, peewee, bam, midget competitive teams. So all the good players are coming to Oles to play hockey. And that's where the skills model is going to come in too because if, um, if you have a group like Oles here that has all these kids coming from all over, 
And then you got fans that come from Troshu, Three Hills, Sundry, wherever, to watch these kids play. And then uh, you bring those kids, and then those kids hopefully end up playing on the Grizzlies one day. So when I played, it was pretty much all local kids within the surrounding communities. And then for whatever reason, uh, I don't know why I didn't follow the Grizzlies for a long time, but they quit going local. So we are trying to get local, which will bring up the fan base, which will bring up the advertising, which will bring up everything uh, so the team is uh, financially uh, sustainable. great to have local kids and I support that as well. However, sometimes it, it's maybe the local talent in the surrounding area isn't as good as what you need in order to make a winning team. So there's kind of a catch-22 there, right? Uh, I, I, I disagree with that. The local talent, if you go from uh, Airdrie to Red Deer, which I consider local still, there is more than enough good hockey players to have a winning team. He might bring in one or two players from outside that, but there's no reason why we need to be going to look up in Grand Prairie for a, a kid when there's already a team in Grand Prairie. There's a team, there's two teams in Calgary, there's a team in Oak Tokes. So a lot of those kids that are good enough to play have been uh, grabbed by these other teams. So we're hoping that with the model of the skills, so we get these kids starting at the smallest age and groom them all the whole way up, that we will have a, uh, uh, a team that's very competitive in this league. Thank you very much. I, I, I do have a couple of questions. And as Councillor Beardshall wants to ask, I don't want to oh, pick on you, but are you good? <laughs> you, I don't want to be accused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ignoring you. Okay. In, in reference to Skills Canada, Jeff, you, you've been sort of in the sidelines there. Selectively I, silent. I'd just like to ask a few questions in reference to your program. Do you feel that we do have enough ice time in all to sustain your program? Well, I think part of the, the request is for an extension to keeping in mind that the programs and the organization that we represent, a lot of our work is done without ice. So it's done in our facility. So we are moving equipment up to the town of Wolds. I'm just in the process of finalizing the location that will be applying for business license for the facility side. That in itself, uh, we have skating treadmills, a rapid shot shooting. We have equipment there that we can work with kids on a year-round basis that doesn't require ice. And that's part of the beauty of it because then we, we take some of the, the need for that ice. But with regards to the spring and summer programs, as it currently states, running to the middle of May isn't the worst thing we can work with. But in a perfect world, if we could extend slightly, a couple weeks, uh, it would be beneficial to us. It would make the scheduling a little bit simpler. The other thing is, is as the, the team before historically, uh, from an AGHL side point, they've never done a June camp. Every other team does a June camp. They have never done one. There's never been ice available here. Is that something that they want to look to do down the road? Possibly, I'm not sure. Because the goal is to do as much as we can in Olds and not be taking products and programs outside of Olds. So long story short, Currently, we access to ice is, is not bad. If we had more, we feel we could do more. With that, there's more programs. Like one of the, one of the commitments for uh, some of the older teams that we're going to be running this year, they're actually going to take part in the league with other junior clubs, like out of the BCHL and stuff, that have showcase teams or teams that they'll do spring programming with. And they've asked us if, if, if Town of Olds will be able to host a tournament. So that would be like a championship weekend, whereby on a weekend you'd have anywhere from 16 to 20 teams coming in the spring. So, you know, where does that play off? How does that benefit the community as far as businesses and services and hotels and all the other business restaurants, those type of things? So, we'd like to try to find a balance because we think the programs are going to bring families too old, where the where in turn they'll spend money, uh, which can in turn be a great benefit. Uh, Councilor Bearshaw and then Question on the skills. I'm interested or something. Uh, was the, the skills program just for the Grizzlies, or would this be for all of minor hockey, open to younger kids as well? It's all of minor hockey. So, for instance, the program that was announced at the minor hockey appreciation night, the Friends of the Grizzlies, are basically um, 
supporting financially the operation where once skills is open here in early 2018, any child that plays minor hockey in South Central Alberta or Ringette can come to a home game, sign up for the program, and they're going to get three free sessions at skills, which is worth $150. So uh, the Friends of the Grizzlies saw that. You know what? We want to show the community that we're giving back. So they're giving this value, this free training to these kids that want to sign up for it at their expense. So that's open to anyone in, in South Central Alberta that plays minor hockey or ringette. So once the facility is open, you just sign up for the program by coming to a home game. You know, and there's a little bit of a selfish aspect there. We want to entice people to come to a game, right? right. Come to a game, sign up, enjoy the game experience, see what the team's doing on the ice, and hopefully we can continue to drive fans to the arena. But that is a very significant way for them to give back right to the heart of hockey. As Darcy said, if we're going to try to develop kids from a young age to an old age to be a Grizzly at some point, we're going to invest in them as well. Oh, thank you. Um, and this is all sounds great, and, but I know there's a problem because I found out quite by accident that, uh, and so the question I guess is through the chair to uh, Mr. Wagstaff is, um, I heard that uh, old Smider lacrosse wants to use the uh, main ice, and now the Grizzlies want to use the main ice. What's the plan to to put those two groups together? Is there an opportunity for that, or, or are we going to be are we going to have a little bit of a fight on our hands over that one? Well, I wouldn't term it a fight because one of the luxuries is those two groups uh, have a, a common base uh, and have been. Uh, Know, communicating back and forth with one another is, is my understanding from both sides. Uh, but there is an inherent space issue uh, for our community if we're, in hand, as um, Mr. Dallas had indicated, well, it's becoming a hub, uh, not only for hockey, but for our sports, um, that that is a space conflict that, that is, is a challenge. There isn't an answer for it right now, but there's three very willing parties, that's lacrosse, the Olds Grizzlies, and the town, that they're trying to see how that might be able to work. So supplemental, I was told that minor lacrosse is made, or, or not minor, but uh, they're looking for a, a space for junior lacrosse of the same type of operation as Grizzlies, and they need, in order to compete in that, they need the main surface. So is there an opportunity? I'm assuming you guys don't want to use the auxiliary surface for the amount of time that that is there. Anybody that can answer that question? You're correct, that's that's the challenge. There is an overlap of anywhere from a month to a month and a half uh, of time there, depending upon when when you uh, start your league games. Uh, the other part of that is we, we did look at, the, from the facility side, whether the auxiliary ice was uh, potential. Um, from skills and the old grizzly side, the auxiliary ice would have done okay for, for them. But operationally, uh, the, the facility is built so that we can't carry ice year-round in the auxiliary. Um, I might have to defer to Mr. Chad to explain that a little more technically, but um, the floor was built in the main so that it would stop the heating of frost, uh, and the auxiliary did not have the same or similar kind of a base, so it was not built to, to handle ice. Uh, in warmer weather at all, and uh, there's a significant risk of heating the floor on the auxiliary guys. Thank you very much for that. Uh, any further questions of uh, our delegation speech? Councillor Blounds. Thank you, uh, Councillor Harper. And maybe Doug can answer this, or maybe one of the gentlemen from the Grizzlies, but if minor lacrosse is looking at bringing in a junior A lacrosse team, that's going to take a significant amount of time to get that <coughs> working, is it not? I mean, this isn't something that's just going to happen this spring, per se. Yes, is my understanding. It's something that they'd like to see happen for this spring. They've made an application to do so. Minor uh, lacrosse, the junior lacrosse, not minor lacrosse, the junior lacrosse is scheduled to present to the council so if you have questions specific to lacrosse um, they are coming at the next uh, B &B meeting. thank you very much any uh, last minute comments councillor on the water thank you uh councillor harper <coughs> pardon me so the asks um are you when when are you 
regarding your asks? Uh, well, with regards to the ice, like our understanding is that the ice is going to be left into a certain point now, and we're building our programming based around that as of now. I've also reached out to other locales like car stairs and stuff who also has access to ice. So the sooner the better that we know on if there's any extension into later in May for the ice would be beneficial to us from a marketing standpoint. Like I said, we have our programs designed, they're deliverable, they're ready to go. They're going to go forward, you know, regardless if we extend past. Um, and maybe the extension, the discussion on that is for years forward. I'm, I'm not sure. That'll be time on you guys. But if we were to know that there would be an extension of a couple weeks, that would help us. That's the way I can get back to some of those other groups about if there's an opportunity to host a tournament or, or such. Because right now I'm holding off uh, any discussions with them around committing to something like that from a league standpoint, from a spring hockey league. Supplemental question, Councilor Yes, thank you. And um, sorry, I, I, did you say when that tournament would be, the spring tournament? Did, it was a go? They've proposed dates to us in April, May, and June. Oh. Like there, there's, there's a, they set aside roughly six to eight weekends, what they call for showcase tournament weekends, and they've just basically said, would we be willing or able to host any one of those weekends. So depending on what the final ice availability looks to us based on what it currently is on today's or what it potentially would be moving forward, that's when I would go back to them. The only thing is the longer it takes for me to go back to them, they might have already made commitments with other 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 towns. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. If I could just add on the naming rights, you know, it, it's a bit of a a lengthy process that one as you can appreciate because of the amount of money that's being asked so you know I appreciate you guys need to go through the process and see what makes the most sense for the town and everyone involved it's just the sooner we know on that the better our ability to go out and start talking to to companies about that opportunity Councillor Ryan and then Councillor Thank you Councillor Harper um, can you tell me when the ice is actually out typically uh, through to the, uh, through to the plant, Mr. Ice. So the auxiliary ice uh, typically comes out at the end of March, and the uh, main ice comes out anywhere between the first or second weekend of May, depending upon the schedule and commitments. So that's what we've looked at historically. So based on that, if, if, if it was the second weekend in May, currently there would be a fairly short window, even if we extended it by a week or two weeks with lacrosse right for the junior a team um you know and we're and like i said the partnership doug tried to explain it well we're trying to work with lacrosse like with the junior a team you know there's been approachments to us about using the team the junior Grizz or the grizzlies room for tournaments and events and things like that and we've said yes we're open to work with them this is not we're not trying to be adversarial with them we're trying to find a working relationship where both entities can get the maximum benefit of the facility for the town for your you know for your council and for your your constituents Thank you, Councillor Harper. Um, I do believe, I guess this would be back through, uh, through the chair to Mr. Wagstaff. We do have a naming rights policy, and so I would think you would be working with Mr. Wagstaff on that. Yes, Council would still have final approval on the naming uh, if something had been negotiated with a third party. Council still has that that caveat, and any group, including the, the Grizzlies, would be no understanding of the parameters of. And I, I suspect that they would have those sort of similar expectations on on reputation of, of whoever's putting the name on the on the facility. All right, then I would accept a motion to uh, thank our delegation, the Wolves Grizzlies, friends of the Wolves Grizzlies for today's uh, delegation. So a motion. Councillor Overwater. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Yes, I would like to thank the uh, Friends of the Grizzlies for coming and presenting today, and hopefully uh, we're able to uh, work with you guys and figure out something so that we can be viable in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending. All in favor of the motion. Thank you very much. The motion is carried. Moving on to 
our third delegation, and thank you very much for your patience. We have.